What's going on guys? Justin Fuller, ex-Honda salesman. I worked at a Honda dealership here in Austin, Texas, where I'm based for almost a decade. And today I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks on the 2024 Honda CRV, much like the one I'm sitting in, so that you don't own this car for a year, only to find out it does all these cool things. So let's hop on in and check it out. All right guys, so this first tip or trick is actually related to rolling the windows down. If you didn't know, if your car is locked and you press the unlock button once and then press it again and hold, it'll actually roll down all your windows and it'll roll down your moonroof if you've got one. Now, the question is, this is great if it's hot outside, but if you look outside, it looks like it might rain. Can I turn this feature off? And the answer is yes. Let me show you how. All right, guys, so we're sitting in a Sport L hybrid. So just a reminder, depending on the trim level that you're sitting in, you're either gonna make these changes from here, or if I slide over here, you're gonna be making them over here using the steering wheel. So let's go to this setting here. So I'm gonna scroll across here and I wanna go into vehicle settings. Now, once you're in vehicle settings, you're gonna scroll all the way across. You wanna go to door and window setup. So remember, this is gonna play out the same depending on where you're looking. When I click into door and window setup, I'm gonna scroll all the way to the very bottom and you're gonna see remote window control. From here, I have the ability to turn that feature off so I never have to worry about accidentally having the keys in my pocket. Maybe I'm laying on the couch taking a nap and I accidentally roll down my windows in the middle of a thunderstorm. So if you're anything like me, you start collecting up your stuff, you get out of your car, right? And you head into the grocery store, maybe you head into your house and you get all the way in there and you go, oh my God, I don't know if I lock the doors to the car. And then you gotta walk all the way back out until you can get close enough and you're hitting the alarm until it eventually locks, right? Well, what if I told you could set up to where you can set it to where when you hit 10 feet from the car, it'll automatically lock the doors as long as you have a key with you. Let me show you how to set that up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll across here and go into vehicle settings. Now, once we're under vehicle settings, we're gonna scroll across again and we're gonna go to door and window setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. Now on here, we wanna select walk away auto lock. So when you get this, the default is that this is always turned off in the car. If you turn this on, now, when you get out of your car, if you have your keys with you and you get 10 feet from the car, it'll automatically lock the doors so you don't have to wonder if your belongings are gonna be safe when you get back. So the Honda CRV is set up with smart key entry. And what that means is if I have this key in my pocket, I can walk up to the door and just put my hand on the door and it'll unlock for me. But what it doesn't do is unlock my passenger doors. Now, if it's raining or it's really bad weather, that's kind of unfortunate. I wanna make sure that when I touch the door handle, all the doors unlock. Let me show you how to set that up. So to get to this feature, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll across and we're gonna go into vehicle settings. Now, once you're in vehicle settings, we're gonna go to keyless access setup. So I'm gonna jump in there. It's gonna be this very first one. So right now I'm gonna click into this and you'll notice that it's set up with driver's door only. If I select all doors, now when I walk up and touch my hand to the door handle, it'll then unlock all the doors to the vehicle. All right, guys, so here's a fun one. Have you ever been in someone's car and they, you know, we get to our destination, they stop the car, and then you go to get out and you're like pulling on the door handles and you're like, hey man, let me out. It won't let open the door, right? Well, Honda's set up to where until the driver turns the car off and opens their door, it keeps all the remaining doors locked. But you can change that setting. You can set it to where they turn off the ignition, it'll unlock the doors. Or when they shift to park, it'll unlock the doors. There's a couple different options you have. Let me show you how to change these settings. So to get to these options, we're gonna come across and go into vehicle settings. Now, once you're under vehicle settings, we're gonna to come to door and window again. Now, under door and window, you're gonna to go to the second one on auto door unlock, right? So the default setting is that when the driver opens their door, it then unlocks the remaining doors of the car. But if you have that person who always is getting their purse together, getting their bags, you know, collecting their nine drinks, right? We all got that friend. It takes them a while to open the door. So you can either change this to when the car shifts to park, it'll unlock all of the doors, or if you jump back in that feature, you can go to that last one where when the ignition turns off, it then unlocks all the doors to the car. So these next couple of tips or tricks are gonna be related to the gas and the gas store and a few things like that. So the first thing I wanna let you know is did you know this is connected to the door locks? So when you lock the doors, it'll lock this. And when you unlock the doors, you can get to this. Kind of cool, right? Now, the second part to this is you'll notice that this is capless. There's a funnel on there, right? So if I ever run out of gas on the side of the road, I need a way to hold that open if I don't have a gas can to be able to pour gas in it. Well, if you come around back here, I'm gonna show you in the hybrid model and where it's at in the non-hybrid model. In the hybrid model, you're gonna pop this open, right? There's no spare down here in a hybrid. So you're gonna have a tire repair kit here, which if you didn't know, that's here. And then secondly, this funnel. This funnel is actually set up to where if you ever run out of gas and you don't have a gas can, you can hold this open and pour gas into it. So super cool. Now, if you have a non-hybrid model, that piece is gonna live underneath here where the spare typically is, right? So since I'm in a hybrid, no spare, but that's where it would live. Now, while we're back here, I get this question occasionally is, what happens if the door, the gas door gets stuck, right? It occasionally happens. Can I pop it open somehow since it's connected to the door locks, right? And the answer is absolutely yes. So back here where this funnel is, back behind it, you'll see there's this yellow wire here. If you ever need to, you can pull on this wire that's right there and it'll actually pop this loose so that you can pop this sucker open. 
So depending on the trim level of the vehicle that you have, you're either gonna have a powered tailgate, which you'll see that powered tailgate button, or you're still gonna have that button and all it does is unlock the tailgate, right? So understand depending on the trim level of the car and if you have a powered tailgate or not, it's either gonna unlock it or it's gonna open it, right? But there's something else I wanna show you related to that. So come on over to the tailgate. So if you're looking at the tailgate underneath, there is a button right here. And what this button is for is if I get all my belongings out of the back, I get all my stuff and my hands are full and I can't reach my keys, when I shut this, I can press this button and it'll actually lock the entire car. So if you didn't know, the Honda CRV offers remote start. And how it works is you're gonna press the lock button first. Now, once you've locked the doors, you're gonna press this remote start button. It's a little round half circle button and you're gonna hold it for about a second. Now, once you've done that, you're then gonna see the lights flash on the car. The lights are gonna flash about six times and then the car is gonna be on. Now, if you're curious as to, well, I don't know if I trust that, couldn't somebody get my car, that sort of thing, understand that the doors are locked. They had to be locked to start the car. And also, once you get into the car, you're then gonna have to have the key fob inside the car and press the start button with your foot on the gate to actually crank up the rest of the car and be able to drive it off. Now, if that still makes you uncomfortable, understand that you can turn this feature off. And I wanna show you how to do that. So we are gonna go over to vehicle settings. Now, once we're under vehicle settings, we're gonna go into keyless access setup. Now under keyless access setup, you have remote start on and off. It's currently on, that's the default setting. If you turn it off, you will now not be able to use that series to be able to crank up the car before you get in it. So if you're not familiar with Hondas, they have smart keys, right? And the smart keys design where if you leave it inside of the car, get out and shut the doors, it won't lock. It'll just start beeping at you. So you'll hear it be like, did it, did it, did it, to let you know the key is still in the car and it won't lock. Now there are rare occasions where you wanna be able to leave your key inside the car and lock it, right? Maybe you're going to do something, maybe a tow truck's coming to pick it up. Uh, somebody's gonna pick it up later with a spare. And there's those occasions, right? Where you wanna be able to lock the keys inside the car and then have somebody get it later. Well, let me show you how to set up to where you can actually lock the keys inside the car. All right, so to be able to set this up, we're gonna come over here into vehicle settings. Now, once we're in vehicle settings, we wanna to go to keyless access setup. Now, under keyless access setup, you're gonna have lockout prevention, right? So currently, this feature is gonna be turned on, right? Meaning that you can't lock yourself out of the car, right? It's designed to where if the keys in the car, it won't lock. But if you turn this feature off, now the vehicle will allow you to lock it with the key inside of it. So when you're driving down the road, you'll notice there's a fuel efficiency backlight and it's a light that'll light up green and kind of fade in and out. And what that's telling you is if you're driving in a way that is efficient for your fuel, giving you better MPGs, it'll light up green. When it fades out, it's letting you know you're not driving that. Now, sometimes that can be distracting and maybe you want to turn that off. Let me show you how to do that. So to turn that function off, you're gonna to wanna to come over here to vehicle settings. Now, when you get into vehicle settings, you're gonna to wanna to go to meter setup. Now, under meter setup, you're gonna see fuel efficiency backlight. If you go ahead and select that, you can then turn that off so that you don't have to be distracted. So the CRV offers some really cool safety features. You've probably heard of the Honda Sensing Suite, and that's things that'll keep the car line, you know, inside of a line or a lane, right? Or if it's starting to look like you're gonna rear under a car, it can, it can give you alerts and then apply the brakes. Uh, well, it also uses things like Lane Keep Assist, which is a camera up here by the rearview mirror to detect those lines on the road. Well, that same camera, when you're driving down the road, will pick up speed signs and read them, and it'll actually display it in the dash for you which is super cool because whereas navigation will tell you typically what the speed is on a road, well, if there's a work zone or something like that, it doesn't know that. And chances are you don't want to get caught speeding in a work zone or like a, you know, a school zone or something like that. But sometimes when it displays it, you know, I don't always pay attention to how fast I'm going and that sign. Maybe I want an alert if I'm going three over or five over, or maybe I don't care until I get to 10 over where I'm really worried about that ticket. Let me show you how to set up those alerts. All right, so to get to this, we're gonna come over and we're gonna go into vehicle settings. Now, once we're under vehicle settings, we wanna go to driver assist system setup. Now, in here, you're gonna wanna scroll down. Now, the first thing you're gonna do is see traffic sign recognition system speed limit. If that's not already on, you wanna turn that on, right? Once you've turned that feature on, now right below it, you're gonna see speed limit warning threshold setting, right? So I'm gonna come in here and I can change this to three, five, or 10. You know, maybe if you don't care about the three or five, right? Nobody's really gonna pull you over for that, but maybe at 10, I wanna start getting some sort of alert to let me to go and, hey man, you're going 10 over, be careful kind of thing. Now, while you're in this menu, I just wanna remind you that all those safety features I was talking about earlier, lane keep assist and the adaptive cruise control and the collision mitigation braking and the road departure, I mean, all these different systems that, you know, will keep you center of the lane or prevent you from driving off the road and all that, understand that you can turn all those features on and off, right? But you can also adjust the settings to them. So when you're in here, like the forward collision warning, right? That's why I mentioned it'll prevent you from getting into an accident. If you're getting alerts too often, understand that you can change those alerts. Maybe you want to shorten it up to where it doesn't give you the alert until you're closer, or maybe you want to you know, lengthen it out to where you get those, those alerts sooner. Understand that on all of these, you can adjust them. 
All right, so these next couple tips or tricks are gonna be related to Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Now, for the sake of this, I'm using my Google Pixel, so I am the dreaded Google user, right? I'm the Android user who's showing up in your group text and messing everything up. But nonetheless, I wanna explain how you can make some, some cool customizations in Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So we're gonna jump on in here. So there's a couple things I wanna show you. One, you can switch these, right? So if you have your music over here and you prefer to have here and your maps closer to you, understand you can make those adjustments. And then secondarily, a couple things you can do when you have this one. One, you can set custom backgrounds. And two, you can set up to where you can call a person immediately with a button. You can also set up to actions, like to navigate to the nearest gas station. And you can select the order of all these things, right? So I wanna walk you through and show you how to do a few of these different things. So the first is gonna be the wallpaper. Very simple to do. All I've gotta do is go down to settings. Once I'm under settings, I'm gonna scroll to wallpaper and then I have a plethora of these ones I can select. So I'm gonna select waves, for example. And then once I've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and back back out. Now, when I go back into it, now you can see I have the waves set up. Now, the second part to this is, what if I wanna move something like Spotify here up to the top, how do I do that? Well, if you scroll to the very bottom, you've got customize. When you do that, it's gonna then launch, right? It's gonna launch my phone app. And from there, I can then come into the phone app, find that app that I want. So for the sake of this, I'm gonna grab Spotify here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move Spotify all the way up to the very top, right? So if Spotify is there, that's what I want. Now, reminder, you're gonna to have to exit Android Auto and then come back into it for these changes to take place, right? So we'll do that. All right, so I've turned the car off and turned it back on and I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Android Auto. Now, I'm gonna go back to the menu and you're gonna see that one waves is here and now you'll notice that Spotify has moved to the very first slot. So understand that that's how you're gonna make those adjustments. Now, the second part to this is, hey, if I wanna set it up to where I can call a specific person with just a single touch, hey, how do I set that up? And then if I wanna set up something like an action, right, where it'll automatically navigate to a place where maybe you like to go to near Starbucks. So we're gonna come down to customize again. Now, once you've done that, it's gonna launch uh, the customized launcher, right? Now under this, you're gonna see add a shortcut. If I go to add a shortcut, there's two options here. I've got call a contact, right? If I click on call a contact, I would then go find that person that I wanna add and then add them, right? Very simple to do. And then that will create what we saw up here your, uh, your custom action to call that person. Now, the second part to this is adding a shortcut to the launcher is gonna be that assistant action. So I jump into assistant action. This is where I'm gonna type in what I want it to be, right? So it may be something like navigate to nearest Starbucks. Now from here, you can test that command. So I can select it and test it to make sure that it works, right? And then once I've done that, I can go, okay, cool, create the shortcut. So this next bit is gonna be more of a tip related to how you use your car and some different things that you can do. I'm holding an AI car box, this mystery black box right here, right? So you can connect this up in your car and it'll basically make your dashboard set up a lot like a tablet. Uh, so it's super cool. Let me show you. So you'll notice that my display now looks completely different than the standard Apple CarPlay and Android setup. And you're also gonna notice things like, hey man, he's got Netflix on her, he's got Hulu, he's got Tubi, he's got ESPN, all these different apps that you don't have available to you when you're using standard CarPlay, right? So that's where this box comes into play. What you do is you can buy this box and you can plug it in and it essentially converts it over into like a, a tablet, right? Now what I'm using to give it data is the hotspot on my phone. Now, because I'm using that hotspot, I can then pull up things like Netflix and be able to stream and watch things, right? It is a really cool feature, right? It allows me, if I'm taking a long road trip, to one, allow passengers to watch stuff on the, the, uh, the dash, but also for me to be able to enjoy it, right? So I can pull something up and be able to watch it, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and pause this real quick, but there's other really cool things to do. I could have not only something pulled up here, but you can also split the screen which is super cool. So if I wanted to split the screen and maybe I had my navigation on one side, uh, which this isn't navigation here, right? But I could add navigation if I wanted to, it's super cool. So it gives you the ability to not only split the screen and do different things, but I could have music here, I could have a, a video going here, all kinds of different optionalities that you have and you can take advantage of, right? So a super cool function. So let me turn some of these things off here real quick. So, so what I really like about what this offers you is one, it gives you the ability to have all of the apps that you want because you have the Play Store and you can go, or you have the uh, you know Apple Store, or Android Store, whatever you're using, the ability to go download whatever you want. But also when you're inside an app, this is gonna display more like it would on your phone or on your desktop dashboard, right? Uh, uh, instead of Apple CarPlay or Android Auto where it kind of limits what you can see. So what I like about this, all right, is that I can jump in, run a search, see something, jump in, and I can look at the whole playlist. It's not like I'm just picking a song kind of going, where it kind of limits what you're able to see. Now it looks like a nice big display that I would typically use if I was on a desktop 
top. So super cool, gives you the ability to not only take advantage of you know your apps at a full potential, but also gives you access to all those additional apps that you wouldn't normally be able to take advantage of. So if you're interested in something like this, I'll, in the description, I'll throw you a video where I kind of review the whole thing uh, and give you some links and some different things like that if it's something you're interested in. All right guys, so with all the different technology that this car has, you start to question, you know, what if I just have the battery die on the car? How am I gonna get into it? It's got power locks, power mirrors, power to everything, right? There's no keyhole on here for me to just unlock the door and I don't even have a key, right? Well, actually you do. So let me show you a couple things related to the key. The first is you've got this little button right here and if you press that button, there's actually a key that does live inside here. Now, if you ever need to change the battery, there's actually a little slot there that you can pop this entire thing open and you can get in here to change the battery. I've actually got a video on that if you ever need to mess with it. So not hard to do. Um, but related to this, this key can actually open up the door. So let me show you where to go to do that. So I know you're looking at this like I am going, Justin, there ain't nowhere to put that key in, but there actually is. If you pull the door handle back, you can see it right up under there. You can slide that key in, right? This key will fit in there and if you do, it'll actually unlock the door for you. Now this next trick is related to a feature that's in the car that I find that just a lot of people just don't know what it is. So I'm gonna explain it. So if you flip over here and look down by that, you're gonna see this button called brake hold. And a lot of people are like, what is that? How does it work? What does it do? So if I turn this button on, you're gonna see brake hold appear up here in green and then you're gonna see brake hold and then it's actually saying hold. While it's saying hold, the car is in drive. You'll notice I can let my foot off. So I'm not touching anything right now. We're in drive and we're not moving right? Really cool feature. And then when I touch the gas, we'll start moving again, right? So I can go, we start moving, and then I'm going to touch the brake. And when I come to a complete stop, you'll see it say hold again. And now I can release my foot from the brake. We're still in drive and it's holding. This is a really cool feature that you can use in like a drive through line or in stop and go traffic where you're just like, stop, go, stop, go, right? I live in Austin. We get that all the time. Uh, but a reminder, got to be wearing your seatbelt to use this feature. Now, if you undo your seatbelt, let's say you're in a drive-thru line, you're like, I can't reach the bag, or I'm at the bank and I can't reach it. If you undo this, understand that it won't let you roll into the car in front of you. It's not gonna disengage and then start driving, but what it will do is automatically turn on the parking brake because it's assuming you needed to get out and it doesn't want the car to start rolling. So even though the car's in drive, the parking brake has now turned on automatically to help me out. All right, guys, so hopefully you like these tips and tricks that I just made. Uh, hopefully they're super helpful. If you feel like there's one that I missed, I hope that you'll reach out to me. Uh, you know, shoot me an email, leave a comment on the video and let me know, hey man, there's one that I really like that I think you should tell others about because hey, we could all use a little bit of help sometimes learning stuff about our vehicles. Uh, I do want to ask you for a couple favors. One, I hope you'll press the like button. Just kind of helps this video get seen a little bit more. And then two, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you like the way I'm doing it, if there's, a, you know, a specific tip or trick that you think I should have added or that I missed or you have a question about it, you know, we're always all learning together. And then, you know, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel. So when I make videos like this, I hope that you will get alerted on them, right? Uh, and then lastly, I just want to say thanks for watching the video and sticking around. So like, comment, subscribe, all those things. Let it go!